you've probably heard of the Hall of Records, right? Yes. This idea. Okay, so that comes a lot of that comes from Casey. He talks about the fact that there's a Hall of Records and one of the locations is three of them, I think. And one of them's the location is one of them is under the the paw of the Sphinx. And then there's another one that's supposedly under I think it was um I mentioned it earlier, it's um Mount Nemrut, like the Nemrut tumulus pile, which is an insane sight that I, I also saw for the first time uh, this year. But, you know, so he's – that foundation, there's a the, – it's, it's the ARE, I think it's the Association for Research and Enlightenment, is the, is essentially the Casey Foundation. Okay. And they've kind of been involved in 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 private expeditions to Giza. They've been looking, right? They're trying to – they're trying to – they're trying to satisfy Casey's prediction about the, the the Hall of Records. And they have been essentially digging and looking around at Giza and these other places since like the 1970s. Now, <laughs> Zahi is very much against the uh, anything Atlantis related. He's he's like, there's no ancient civilization. So on, in publicly facing, right? He's He decries any of that type of thing. But he did also grant like the... Casey Foundation, like a five-year permit to do unlimited, essentially digging and excavation on the Giza Plateau, including in the Great Pyramid. And so, it's on one hand you, you sort of decrying all of this, this, um, you know, anything lost civilization. And then on the other hand, you're enabling essentially an organization whose stated goal is to is to prove out Atlantis and that there was a Hall of Records and everything like that. Not only that. But Edgar Casey's son, Hugh Lynn Casey, who wrote it, he wrote a book, and in that book he claims, and I will say that Zahi Was has denied this. He claims that that the Edgar Casey Foundation funded his education, like they paid for his education at Pennsylvania University. They found, like he he literally says in the book, and this isn't me saying it. He found that he they found Zahi, who was a site inspector at the time, like not you know like lower ranked kind of guy. And, but he was pliable and agreeable, and they thought he was someone they could work with. So they funded his education along with Mark Lehner, uh, who's been a long-term partner of Zahi Huas, and and that went through the Pen- Pennsylvania University. They got him his doctorate, and for sure it's verified. Like Zahi has had any engagements with the ARE plenty of times. He's gone and spoken at their events. You know, he's been part of it. He goes back there and lectures quite often. So, you know, it's just strange to me that he's associated with an organization like the ARE, which has has done these secretive digs and and there's strong evidence as documented by Robert Boval, which might be one of the reasons that Zahi doesn't like him so much. It, it, he's documented the fact that Zahi's been enabling kind of secret expeditions dig digging and drilling around the Sphinx since the 1970s. Like there's there's kind of one acknowledged drilling uh, effort that they made to to look under the Sphinx. I think it happened in the mid 90s thereabouts and they were they were drilling under the body of the Sphinx. And they were, the, the stated goal was, oh, we're checking the integrity of the limestone bedrock given the water tables rising, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But there's plenty of evidence for, for a bunch of other drilling that's happened, like as far back as the late 1970s. And there's pictures of, you know, Hugh Lynn Casey and Mark Lehner and Zahi Uwas from those times, like a young Zahi. They're all together. And then in the, in the, in the mid to late 90s, he enabled uh, something called the Shore Expedition, which was Dr. Joseph Shore... A couple other people, Boris Saeed was one of them, but they're all ARE members. They're all part of the Casey Foundation and none of them are Egyptologists or archaeologists, but he gave them a five-year permit, open permit to do whatever they wanted up at the uh, up at the, the Giza Plateau. And they did a bunch of stuff. They did a bunch of excavations around the Sphinx and Zahi was involved in it and they even made a documentary that's never been seen. <laughs> so Boris Saeed, who was a filmmaker, he's also since died... Um, and I, I dug into like these old Art Bell radio episodes from the nineties where he was talking about it. They had a, he had a falling out with, um, I think Joseph Shaw, the guy that, that, that was funding the experiment or the, the, the expedition. And just based on this fallout that the, the documentary kind of went into limbo and it's never been seen, but apparently it's part of it. And they, they had gone in under the Sphinx and looked at chambers and, and Zahi at the time, and Boris said they found chambers beneath the Sphinx. Like they 100% found chambers beneath the Sphinx. By the way, also a claim made by John Anthony West and, and Dr. Robert Schock when they, they uh, analyzed the area with ground penetrating radar, they found chambers beneath the Sphinx. And at the time when they were doing this experiment, Zahi said, oh, we, we've got this incredible announcement and discovery. It's going to shake up the world's history. It's going to, we're going to change what we know about the, the sort of the structure of the Giza Plateau and what's down below, below the ground. He was teasing it. And then this documentary kind of went away 
and he's never said anything about it since. And in fact, to this day, denies that there's any chambers or any structures or, or, or things beneath the beneath the Sphinx. He, they, he now if, if asked, he'll say, "Well, he, yeah, the, the, they found fish, natural fishes in the rock, and there's nothing else," which is nonsense. I mean, Boris Said's on record of saying, "No, I've seen them. Like he, he's been down there and seen them and been in them." Well, it's kind of what he says, yeah. And and um, but it's very secret. It's all private, privately organized, and, and permitted by by Zahiwas and. So it's it's there's an interesting history. I think look, I th- I think if there are chambers down there, and if there's anything in them or there was, it's long gone. Like I just I think it's been pilfered or it's been, it's been taken. Or it's mm-hmm. been it's not public. Um, I mean, there's a, there's also a chance that if there was ever anything in there, the Egyptians or the dynastic Egyptians might have taken it. There's a couple of people with theories along those lines. Like Manu Seyfazada wrote a book I think called Beneath the Sphinx that. That talks about the idea that that the Hall of Records may well have been there, but it was discovered by the Old Kingdom Egyptians who took it, and then there's some evidence that they were replicating some of that inf- information and knowledge through a particular cult that persisted through dynastic Egypt, and and he, it's an interesting story that he puts together. It is new data, but it seems likely that they're indicating some really interesting information, like the spacing of planets, the relative distance of planets in the solar system, like all this cosmic information. That it seems like they didn't really know what to do with, but it was information that they'd gotten from, you know, this trove of data from a lost ancient civilization, and it's just they just then were replicating it and kind of recording it down in their own way. And there's all these interpretations of the, of this stuff that seems to match all of what we know about the solar system and the structure of. It. So it's it kind of goes. There's all these different directions that stuff goes in. And I'd love, I, I've been meaning to do a, a more dedicated sort of deep dive into that shore expedition and the history of secret digs around the Sphinx because, you know, the Sphinx and the Sphinx temple, it it is, uh, it is like it's described as a gateway. Like there is a lot of legitimate reasons to think that there's something below that structure in that part of the Giza Plateau. Mm. Like even the way it's historically depicted and talked about from ancient Egypt, like they... They often, when they draw out the Sphinx, I mean, they show it on a pedestal. Like if the Sphinx is always depicted in these steles most of the time on top of a pedestal. And in many of those pedestals, there's a doorway. And then the Sphinx is often described as a doorway or as a guardian, uh, a guarding a doorway and into the underworld or something like this. And, and when you look at the Sphinx, there's, it doesn't, it's obviously sitting on the bedrock, right? But you have to imagine there's there's a structure in front of it that's next to the, the valley temples on like the left looking at the Sphinx. Then there's the Sphinx temple in front of the Sphinx and the Sphinx is behind it. Now, the Sphinx temple has been shut for public access for I don't know how long. Like Yusuf, I mean, he's in his 40s. He's never been in there until we got to go in there on one trip. We were probably one of the first groups to ever, and, and thanks again to the people I know in Egypt who arranged this through the Ministry of Antiquities to finally open up access to the Sphinx Temple as a special permission. And we went in there, very interesting structure, amazing, there's amazing granite cornice blocks and all this stuff. But it, if you would imagine it back in the day with its cornice blocks, which are these curved blocks that would have been around the edge of it, and you'd looked at it from from down in the valley towards the Sphinx, it would have looked as if the Sphinx was sitting on top of the temple, which makes the Sphinx temple potentially the location for the pedestal of the Sphinx, which has the doorway to the underworld. Now, in the Sphinx temple, when you go in there, there is indeed evidence for shafts that go down. There's there's these, again, these giant, there's like an 80-ton channeled granite block in the ground beneath the floor tiles that have since been removed that terminates at a shaft that goes down to we don't know where that hasn't been cleared and it, but it, it obviously goes underground and i mean not only that but at the front of the sphinx temple if you walk back if you if you're standing there at Giza and you're looking at it it's where the like where the the seats are for the sound and light show sort of off in the corner about 30 or 40 feet in front of the sphinx temple there's a little concrete pad and there's a there's a there's a metal tube sticking out of it like this just off the ground just sort of unobtrusively in the corner that's where Zahi Huas himself did a drilling experiment so they drilled down like 150 feet this is a limestone plateau and at like 150 feet or 130 something like that they hit granite this drill hit granite and returned these shards and flakes of red granite from 130 feet below the ground what the fuck? and there's not natural granite there so what he they what the hell is down there 
that deep and it's made of granite. Right. Whoa. I mean, half. Yeah, it, it goes on and on. Like you, you go halfway up the up the plat up the uh, the causeway, like connects the Sphinx and the the Valley Temple to the Middle Pyramid Complex. Right. It's this big causeway. It goes up to the pyramid. Halfway up it is what's known as the Osiris Shaft. Mm-hmm. And this is three different levels that you can go into. Again, as a special permission, there's water at the bottom, but there's three chambers that go down to about 150 feet, and there's big granite boxes in them. <laughs> and as you go down there. Like, and there's tunnels that literally lead off down the causeway that have never been explored at the bottom level. They're caved in and stuff, but they've never been explored. There's there's footage of when they did pump the water out back in the day when they're exploring it, and there's, it was like a fox, I think it was on the, the Fox Channel, and Zahi was down there with a reporter and, and, and saying, oh, this was the tomb of Osiris or whatever. And, and she's like, well, what about these tunnels? He's like, no, we've never explored them. We sent a boy in and he couldn't get very far, but we've never looked at, as to where they go, so... Like we, there's definitely underground chambers and infrastructure down there, and we honestly don't know if they've been explored and if you know there's anything in there or, or if you know what's happened. Which is, what do you think his motivation would be to change his story on that? 